Uh, screen, yeah, hey! Hi, hi everyone. Hi everyone. I'm James Wesley and this is... Seth Radetzky, what up? <laughs> Welcome to Stars in the House, a daily web series to benefit the Actors Fund and bring some light and joy to um, everything that's going on right now. Yeah. And education with Dr. John LaPook. Yeah, so we have like, amazing entertainment and a chief medical correspondent as all shows should. Absolutely. I'm gonna start the banner going. So as you're listening to this babbling, first of all, start donating if you can, actorsfund.org. Most importantly, right now, please, can you share? So those of you that have what's called social media, can you share to your Twitter, Facebook, anything, say, oh my God, watch this. Just put it up because the more, more eyes that are on it, the more money we're gonna raise. The donations have been incredible. I mean, in such a time of economic stress, the donations coming in have been great. And just so you know, the Actors Fund is for everyone. It is a misnomer. Remember the word misnomer from SATs? No. Anybody? Misnomer, my drag name? Okay, anyway, what it means is it's not just for actors. It's for anybody in the business, for makeup artists, hairstylists, people in the box office, ushers, lighting designers, and no one is working. So the Actors Fund has this great need, people to pay their rent, pay their medical bills, but the regular way the Actors Fund makes money, one of them is donations from Broadway Cares. Right. Broadway Cares fundraising is over the Red Bucket Brigade, never happened. Broadway Backwards was canceled. The Actors Fund, Big Gal has been canceled. So they have even more need to give money and they're making even less money than ever. So it's really up to people literally giving a dollar makes a difference if you can. If not, just watch this and enjoy it and feel good and don't feel stressed out, please. Well, and and so two things with that, Seth. One, yes. I have some donations that were left over from Norbert oh, Leo Butts. Norbert Leo Butts and also his special guest stars. We had, were the special um, guest stars we had Will Chase. And John Lithgow surprised Norbert. It was so great. And Norbert sounded amazing. He played guitar, played piano. It was just an incredible show. Absolutely. And um, and so this, this total right now, before we got these in for Norbert's show, we have raised so far $49,723 for the Actors Fund. Since Monday Since night. Since Monday. And that doesn't include today. But so this is our few totals for today. I see Chris Sieber going crazy. <laughs> Hi, Chris. You'll be on soon. Hey, girl. <laughs> so this is for the last ones for Norbert. So Lisa from Maine. $50, Virginia from Chicago, $100, Jennifer from Minnesota, $25, Jessica from California, $50, Elena from uh, Maryland, $50, Monica from San Francisco, $25, Judith from Nevada, $25. Nevada, they say. Nevada, okay. Shang Pin from California, $50, Teresa from New Jersey, $50, and Susan from South Carolina, $100. <laughs> South Carolina. Thanks. So we tonight we have Patrick Wilson. Yes. That as Seth just said, we have a special guest before we bring on Dr. LePook and and uh, Patrick it's our, Wilson. It's our good pal who's going to be back Sunday night. Just FYI, company. Um, here's to the lady. Anyway, company was supposed to open Sunday night. It's Sondheim's 90th birthday. It ain't happening. So we're going to have a mock or our own opening night of company on Sunday with the cast. And here's one of the brilliant stars that I was chatting with today. And he had an amazing idea that he did. So let's talk. Which to by the way, it, it, it'll link into the question that we'll be soon asking Dr. LaPook. So yes, all we're related. all connected. Here's a wonderful, so talented and hilarious, Christopher Sieber. Hi, Chris. Can you, can you hear me? Wait. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. There's a little bit of a delay, okay. Chris, but. Should I just get rid of these? Well, your sink is off. Yeah, it's a sink. Take your earrings off for a second. Is that better? Yes, Queen. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Where are you? All the way over there. Turn on. Can you light. Hold on. Let me, you? let me turn you up. Let me turn you up. Let me turn you up. Is there we go. Home? Hi, everyone. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Chris, tell everybody the amazing thing you were doing today. Uh, we have a great group of neighbors here on our little lake in northern New Jersey. And uh, it's been a week, so we missed each other. And we do hang out a lot. So we decided, and we all have dogs. And so we decided to have a five o'clock cocktail hour dog walking, get to know you social distancing party. <laughs> so you did social distance. You didn't all get together and spread things. You, you social distanced. Oh, we were six feet apart all the entire time. It was hilarious. But it, it actually, it actually, but we could still hear each other. But there was like a, a large, uh, gosh, probably about 10, maybe a, a dozen of us walking down the streets of our neighborhood and the cars stopping and it was it, there there it is yes so they, as you notice all the people that are close to each other are actually um already uh in in a relationship like my my husband kevin and i and my neighbors uh, jan and corinne were together um so anybody that you see close together we're already in a house together so we stayed away from those but we still all love each other we're very good friends so and it was so nice because it was such a nice day today. 
So it was, That's it was a great fantastic. idea. It's a great idea. And I love that you took a video and I love that you live in a neighborhood that has celebrities. I'm going to show the video. By the way, that's Bob Martin, who wrote Drowsy Chaperone and The Prom, you know? So, but that's him right there. Anyway, everybody's dogs are out. It's a beautiful day. We're meeting our neighbors. We're staying six feet apart, as you should. Anyway, uh, hope to be back to work soon. I don't get time off to enjoy myself, so why not? Why not enjoy yourself? Take care, everyone. That was great. That Chris. was so great. We've never shown a video before. You're the first. We're so excited. Hey, Chris, hold on. Well, let's bring in Dr. LaPook. Because I'm sure okay. hi Dr. LaPook. I'm sure you would really hi. approve of hey. that, right? Uh yeah, I I have let's see, telepathy. What question are you gonna ask me about pets and uh yes, Dr. LaPook? So so I, I don't have the name of the person who asked, but but she asked, I am keeping my social distance in dog parks, but other people's dogs don't social distance. Can other people's dogs give give it to you, the coronavirus? All right. So first of all, people out there, I keep saying, go to cdc.gov. And if you Google CDC space coronavirus space pets, you will get to the page that I'm reading that says a bunch of stuff. Uh, and it says, at this, time, there, <clears throat> at this time, there is no evidence that companion animals, including pets, can spread COVID-19. Uh. That said... There are a couple of cases from Hong Kong of dogs that, you know, they were able to isolate the virus when they actually tested them. That doesn't mean that they were infected or they got sick. In fact, there was, I think there was no evidence they did get sick. But the common sense part of you, and I think this is what, when I asked my friends and, and other health professionals about this is, you know, if you have a, a, a person who is sick, who's infected and shedding virus, you know, dogs are all over you. So don't let them lick you. And certainly, you shouldn't let them lick other people if you're sick. You know, I think yeah. that, I think that's the idea. Have a, has there been a case that's been proven that it's spread that way? No, not that I know of. But just at this point, when we don't have all the data, it just kind of makes common sense. You know, they could have it and spread it, but not get the disease themselves. So again, I think that's a very special situation where somebody is sick and the dogs all over them and. So use use your common sense, but I don't think as a as a rule we're not thinking that pets are getting sick and then sneezing on their owners and getting them sick and vice versa. Okay, well, Dr. Lapook, you stand by, and Chris, we will see you on Sunday. Thank Thanks, you so guys. Much. Thanks for having me, Dr. Lapook. Thank you. But hold on, Chris, we want to just get some praise. What? Chris yeah. was my favorite guest on. Just so you know, everybody loves you. Your your walk was hello, New Jersey Pride. I saw Chris in the prom, outstanding and hilarious. <laughs> that is the saddest thing that it closed. It 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 was the best. That was the best. That was not even work. It was just hilarious fun with my your friends. It was great. Just like Triumph of Love. Just kidding. We'll discuss that later. Chrissy, <laughs> great seeing you. We'll see you Sunday for Sunday company opening night, Sunday. Hopefully, yeah. I got some for you guys. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. You get rid of that banner. So now we're gonna have our very. Hold on. How do I get rid of this stupid banner? That's, that's why I was waiting on you. There you go. Okay. All right. Going. So, um, everybody, uh, wait. You guys up right here. I got it. Up. There we go. We have our we have our star. Um, I'm really excited. He's a Broadway star. Sadly, he's gone to um film, but we hope that he comes back. So here he is, the fabulous Patrick Wilson. Hey, Hi, hey, hey, buddy. How are you guys? Good. Okay, describe where you are. I'm in my basement, my man cave, with my microphone. Um, this is where I spend a lot of my time. Uh, later, perhaps I'll take this iPad off and show you around. That basically, what I did when I moved here was I took all my old like '80s uh, metal posters and rock posters and um, and framed them. Like a, like a museum, because where else would you put up ridiculous posters from your childhood? So here. So who's that right behind you in that poster? That's well, that's Van Halen. They sort of lead the charge. I don't know what that see. means. What's that? What'd I don't say? know what that means. So Van, I guess Van Halen was a group. Okay. Yes, oh. oh. No, he's gonna turn around. I thought he oh, was just on you. No, he's, he's trying to figure out how to turn his iPad around or iPad. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, wait, why can't I turn around? I turn around the other You did it before, you just click that little. 
Hang on. Hold on. Ah. So wait, I've lost my thing here. That's what she said. That is that's uh, that is actually what she said. I know. Gonna, what up with I'm that? I'm not going to. Um. Anyway, I've got a lot of stuff in here, a lot of drums and um, equipment because I like to spend a lot of my time down here. Is it literally a man cave? Well, women are allowed. <laughs> who else? Who else are you? Um, Pat. Yeah. Who else are you there with in the overall house, Patrick? Oh, well, I have two children. One child is here. Would you like to say hello? hello. This is Cass. Hi, Hi Cass. Cass. I love your shirt. Who's upstairs. Uh, and my wife. And we also have my mother-in-law, my wife's uh, mother, and my sister-in-law, who's pregnant. And she wow. also has a two-year-old. And her husband. So we are all holed up here during this quarantine. So at least we are surrounded by awesome family. What is the food that everyone is obsessing about? For them, uh, uh, we go through a lot of chips, I've realized. Just um, plain chips, or is there a lot of chips being dipped in things? I got to know. They're just, just bags of chips. I, I, uh, it's, I think it's a, I'm not going to call out my pregnant sister-in-law, but let's just say <laughs> she, the chips. And, and as well, she should. <laughs> That's now, right. Now is the time to overeat. Hey, Patrick, before Seth gets started, one of the things we've been asking everyone is what are you doing to stay healthy and connected with those that you love? Obviously, you're surrounded by a lot of that in your under your roof, but yeah, we had a Zoom party last night with some other family members, which was awesome. Um, Zoom so is like, if you don't know, it's a website where you can like look at all different people at once. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of FaceTiming, a lot of Marco Polo, a lot of uh, um, today we actually had a virtual, we are in the midst of, uh, Mary Poppins junior rehearsal, which we, uh, my wife and I are, uh, co-directing. Well, she's I mean, choreographing it. Hold on. The two of you, the kids are being directed. Aren't they crazy intimidated? Weren't they like, oh my God, I saw you in little children. <laughs> they, they have no idea what we do for a living. Didn't they see you in full Monty in 2000? <laughs> <laughs> they totally did. Cool. No. Uh, these children are, are, are like 10 year olds. So, um, yeah, we've been doing it, um, for about four or five years. I oh, love wow. that Patrick. Do you know about the Laura Benanti thing where people are uploading? I saw that and I, and I love that. I think that is such a classy thing, such an awesome thing for her to do. And you know, it, it, it shows how much she wants to give back to the community and the community gives back to her. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty stellar move and I can't wait to see, you know, uh, everybody that's reaching out. We had our, we tried to have a virtual rehearsal today, which was insane. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy town, really. <laughs> oh my! No, by the way, if you don't know, exactly. <laughs> and that was you. For <laughs> um, fragile. come on, guys. Super, you know, it was terrible. Is that the crack? Oh, something wide or strong. Um, if you don't know, by the way, Laura Benanti, do hashtag Sunshine Songs. And people are uploading their school performances they never got to give. Just acapella at home. It's hashtag sunshine songs. Okay, we are we are still holding out here that our elementary school will be able to uh, to do it. We will we will we will do it somewhere, even if it's in um, our backyard through social distancing. We're going to do it. So. Six feet apart. They just need lavaliers and permanent monitors. Um, <laughs> okay, Patrick Wilson. I know you're going to give us uh, a song. I can't remember the order of songs. What are you going to give me first? Well, what I thought I would do is this. I'm not just gonna sing. Is yeah. this thing on? Yeah, right. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> exactly. No, so what I thought I would do mm. is I would do a couple songs from shows from auditions that I bombed, totally bombed, because I never got to do, never got the job. So, my first one. Can you hear that? Okay. I wish your voice was a little bit louder. Oh. I can hear the guitar, the but it's fine. Louder, like this? Yeah? Okay. You can hear the guitar, okay? Guitar is great. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple songs. I thought I'd do a more uplifting one, even though they're about both about the same tempo, um, of shows that I didn't get. And then I will discuss the horror of, of this audition later. But this is the first show I saw on Broadway, and it was the first show I saw in the West End. Um, and then I auditioned for the German company and totally blew it. This is this is Starlight Express. I bet no one's ever done Starlight Express, but guess what? They're about to now. Hold on. 
I'm going to record this. Didn't you say you wanted to record it? All right. Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for recording. I'm yes. remembering. Great. <laughs> Okay, I cannot believe they didn't cast you. Well, I kind of can, but that was <laughs> the outrage. <laughs> Patrick Wilson, we think it's so important to keep in touch with friends during the social distancing that we brought one of your pals to say hello. Here is Ms. Andrea Martin, who's calling in from Canada. <laughs> Patrick, first of all, I can't believe you have a microphone in your basement. Yes, I do. I'm very, very impressed. <laughs> oh. Where are you right now? I'm in my little office in Toronto in my home. You're in full makeup, looking stunning, by the I way. I have so much makeup on, and why do I have to see myself? Wow. <laughs> That's how this works. So it's I mean, like, seriously, what am I doing? The morning show? I mean, what have, what have I done? Andrea, There's Julie. Hello. Andrea Martin, how do, how do you know Patrick Wilson? Patrick, how do you know Andrea? Oh, oh. Let me you, does this ring a bell, Patrick Wilson? If I wasn't so, wait, if you weren't so young and I wasn't so old, I'd marry you, get you to have my chillin'. I'm sure that's not the right words. I, I forget all my lines. It's been <laughs> like 18 years. Um, you, we did Oklahoma together. Here, I'm gonna scoot up. It's better now. We did Oklahoma together 
And then I stayed at your house when I was in LA. You did. And I soiled your sheets. And I, you know, I haven't washed them since you left. <laughs> the only thing that brings me joy. Okay. Uh, and on that note, we're going to take gonna, control of this show. We're going to say bye. And I'm going to, we'll see you, Andrea. Very Thank you, Andrea, soon. for checking out. Hey, I want to tell you something about Patrick Wilson. Go. So, you know, I, I nobody probably knows this, but maybe he doesn't even want me to say. But Patrick, during Oklahoma, was cast in Angels in America. And they were night shoots every night. He never missed a show of Oklahoma. He would do Oklahoma. He would then go shoot in Angels in America. And correct me if I'm wrong, Patrick, you'd never been in front of a camera before? Was that your first? Yeah, the first time I'll film. Yeah. And did you see that performance? It was extraordinary. Yeah. And every, every night on stage when we were interacting, I would think, I really, I thought to myself, this guy is this guy is going to be a movie star because there was just something in your eyes. You know what they say about movie stars? Everything's in your eyes. Anyway, I'm so happy for you and your career and your children and wife. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. You're welcome, honey. Andrea, we miss you. We'll FaceTime you tomorrow. Is that it? That's, Bye. That's it. Wow, that's really depressing. <laughs> At 29, you've had it. All right, get me out of here. Bye. Bye. We'll see you. We'll see you very soon. We love you, Andrea. Love you. Too. All I right. Can't. I can't. Okay. Well, let me read some. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Some donations that we just got in. Nancy from New York, $100. Thank you very much. Uh, ActorsFund.org. Sarah from California, $35. Julie from Pennsylvania, $50. Jeffrey from Brooklyn, $25. Suzanne from New York, $100. Rebecca from Texas gave $75. And Barbara from Brooklyn, $100. That's just a few of the people who've just oh, yeah. given. Baby, that's awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. What you guys are doing, honestly. It really is. It's such an amazing, it's, I, that's why I'm sure every single person you ask will do it. Because if there's one thing we can do during this time, it's, if, if there's any sort of silver lining, it's that we pull into focus what's most important. And of course, it's your family and it's your friends and this community, the way that you guys have embraced this community and shown how, uh, how far your reach can extend, you know, whether it was the Conscious for America or this, uh, you guys are gents. You guys are just- oh, Thanks, Patrick. Thank you, Patty. Well, he, Patrick did our Conscious for America. You sounded amazing in that. And we'll discuss that in a moment. We want to bring on our chief medical correspondent, as usual, Dr. LaPook. Patrick, if you have any questions or if Dr. LaPook has Dr. a LaPook fabulous on. update, any updates for us, Dr. John LaPook? You are up to the minute. I want to pick up on something Patrick said about, you know, this being a time when we realize what's really important. I mean, as if we, we have to learn it over and over again. It's our health. It's our family. It's our loved ones. It's our connections. We're running 200 miles an hour all the time towards what? Hmm. And, you know, I... I my mother was somebody who liked to look for silver linings. Not everything has a silver lining, but if there is a silver lining here, it's that it is bringing people together. And um, that's the reason why this is so important. I worry uh, that at a time when we're physically distancing ourselves from people, that it's really important to be, remain emotionally connected. It's bad for your health to be separate. And um, I do want to give people one concrete thing to do every time, maybe. Uh, so after the broadcast is over tonight or the, the webcast, um, think of one person who may be alone, who may benefit from a phone call or Skype or FaceTime and reach out to them. And hopefully it's not the same person who everybody is thinking of and they're gonna be inundated tonight, but this poor person. Um, but I think it's really important for us to continue to go back to why we're doing this. And again, you're gonna hear it over and over again because Tony Fauci, who's the head of infectious diseases for the NIH, you keep hearing his name, he's a hero. He keeps. He told me yesterday, I think he said, you can't say it enough flattening the curve. Why are we doing this? We're doing this. It, and it's it's hard to do it, stay apart from each other. Because at the beginning of an epidemic, there's a big spike in cases. And when you have that spike, it can overwhelm a healthcare system. We're seeing it in, in parts of the country. You know, the, the system doing that, shaking, hasn't totally cracked yet, but not enough doctors or, or nurses, health professionals, medical equipment, beds, testing. We're seeing all that. So if you can flatten that curve so that all the cases don't come at once, they come over time. It, it's been proven in China, South Korea, it makes a difference. And then we're talking about washing your hands for 20 seconds. You're gonna hear from me every single time with soap and water the right way, the tips, the fronts, the back, the knuckles, everything. You sneeze or cough into 
the crook of your arm or into a tissue. And then this social distancing, it really matters. And it matters for everybody. I saw again today, people, I think it was on Bondi Beach in Australia, everybody congregated. If you're, you know, yes, you may feel that you're young and immortal, but first of all, we're finding out from data over the last week, 20 year olds, 30 year olds and 40 year olds, they can get very sick. They don't get sick, they can be asymptomatic or have mild symptoms and spread it to the loved ones. So everybody's gotta be responsible. I'm gonna say that over and over again because I think it's really the paramount issue. If we're gonna do something and we can do something, I know we can, it's gotta be right now, together, we are empowered. Nobody likes to feel helpless. And guess what? We're not helpless. We do this all together, no exceptions. Dr. Rakuth, you'll like this comment here. I reached out to an elderly friend of mine earlier today. We had a nice little chat on Facebook. It was great to catch up with him and to know that he's doing okay during this tough time. It's exactly what you're saying. We gotta be in touch. And there's a medical reason. If you feel less anxious, you can sleep better. If you can sleep better, that's when your immune system can repair itself. Right. So it's, it's all good. All right. Okay. Dr. Lapu, can you stand by and uh, while Patrick sings another song, because we've got another question for you. So, Patrick, what do you yeah. got on your sleeve? <laughs> well, so aside from that, so that the, the Starlight Express audition was the, uh, the only time I've ever missed a flight. And I flew from Pittsburgh and totally bombed the audition. Uh, and then the another time that I, the show that, of course, our show in the late 80s if you came to the new york in the 90s les mis was like the one to do yeah how did you not get les mis so <laughs> well um I, I i auditioned for it once remember when they 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 fired they didn't renew the contracts right With the 10th anniversary they fired all the original mostly all the original people and i was on the road doing carousel and i flew took a a, a red eye and not that, that is important, only because I got there and I just, I just chunked it, just totally blew it. Had to sing, I think, like an A flat or something. And, and no, in hindsight, why, well, I, I, when you're singing Billy Bigelow and just going, you know, you're singing big baritone, you know, it's for a year and a half straight, all of a sudden, anything above your saju, like I wasn't like, you know, a, a, a tenor at that point. In my Who are you going in for, Angera? Yes. And Buntrock got it. Stephen Buntrock got it. Who was with me and Andrea and uh, took over for me in, uh, in Oklahoma? Oh, wow. That's uh, one more day before the storm. One yes. more day before the storm. Yes. So I followed mm -hmm. the barrack because Anthony Warlow, was, who in the symphonic recording, was my hero, my absolute hero. I mean, yeah, we could talk about him for. I, I finally met him during Annie and I just like bowed at his feet. Like, you yeah. have no idea how much you influenced me in, uh, in singing because I'd never heard anybody. Same like that. And in college, you know, we had to go and to Colony or or to Footlight, you know, yes. all those uh, the, the recordings that because there was no internet. So right. for him, those first center stage and those first uh, uh, CDs of his just blew my mind that somebody could just sing with such guts. I just loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. Always wanted to sing like him. So anyway, so so I thought I would um, I would be bring him home. Why not? <laughs> Oh, that you know, revival. Here we go. Here we go. All right. God on high, hear my prayer. In my need, you have always been there. He is young, he's afraid. Let him rest, heaven blessed. Bring him. like the sun I might have known. If God had granted me a son, the summers die one by one. How soon they fly on and on. 
and I am old and will be no bring him peace bring him joy he is young he is only a boy you can take you can give Let him be, let him live. If I die, let me die, let him live. Bring him home, bring him home. Hey, you got to change the lyrics to stay, stay at home. Yes. <laughs> That's true, John. A hundred percent. Stay at home. Um, Patrick Wilson, we want you to keep in touch with your friends for sanity. How about this, pal? Yeah. What's up? <laughs> Hi, Jason. Stay at home, baby. Move in the house. <laughs> Where have you been, Danieli? What? Uh, Where have you, you were you were down south, right? Yeah, I was uh, in Sarasota doing the new Aaron's and Flaherty Frank Galati musical, and we pushed it all the way through three full weeks of rehearsal. We were doing run-throughs in the studio, and uh, you know, it caught up to us and uh, drove Lynn Aaron's back. Uh, two full days of driving up I-95, and just got back day before last. So I'm now up in uh, Columbia County near Albany in my house, isolated by my sweet little self with sweet little case of wine, watching you bring it on home. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Man. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, fantastic. Jason, Thanks. I'm just curious because I'm shallow. What's the highest note you've had a hit in a show? Let's see. Wait. Sorry, I'm gonna, I can't mute my... That was so immediate. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> what show is where did you have to hit a C? A Candide. Oh, Candide. With Andrew yeah. Martin. Oh, with Andrew Martin. Um, would you boys tell me the story, please, Patrick and Jason, about um when a certain lighting cue didn't work? I'm obsessed with it. Go, you go. <laughs> I don't remember where we in it seemed to be during the run. I don't think it was as early as previews, but during the finale. We would uh, be taking off various parts of our uniforms, and uh, they were down to our G strings. Yeah, and we, then, remember we noticed we noticed that the, the the lights had already screwed up. Like we were like one cue ahead. Yeah, you could feel it on your back, like when you're walking up stage, and there's absolutely nothing but just a little red G string going right past. You know there and you can feel like the heat on our on your back it's like getting hotter and hotter and brighter and brighter and it just didn't feel right and we turned around and did the choo, and the hands went up and we were i think we were full q or two cues ahead and yeah from, from my recollection we were far enough ahead to go to the the curtain call cue oh. which was the brightest lighting cue in the entire show Wait, so you're saying that when you were fully nude, the cue is actually, instead of blinding the audience, the cue was the next cue, which was full lights on your junk. It was all lights off, yeah. And my favorite yeah. thing is that I think Roman was on my right, and I think you were on my left, because <laughs> Roman was just going, <laughs> and Patrick was going, bleep. I mean, he was yelling at me. Explicit. Yeah. I locked eyes with about a, like an eight-year-old girl. 
Oh, wait, Patrick. Patrick, you told me that you locked eyes with the eight-year-old girl, and first you were devastated for her, and then you were furious at her parents for bringing her. So angry at her mother. <laughs> yes, looked at the girl, looked at her, like, what are you doing? And then, then sort of feeling like, I'm sorry, wasn't supposed to happen? Like this whole monologue running through my head. OMG. Yeah. Okay, so like the only time, I mean, there were people that would, like there were hen parties that would sit in full rows and wear sunglasses, like put sunglasses up as if that was sort of counteract the, the backlighting for the finale. Okay, oh, well, you know what? The trick was if you sat in the box seats, the light wouldn't yeah. hit you in the face. In the box seats. Oh, girl, I was there. Okay, I'm going to give you guys um, a little memory so that I'm taking you out for two seconds. Here's a little. <laughs> the next cut, the next cut was, um, oh shit. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow, was it? Was it? Was it a guy, was that Gwyneth Paltrow? Yeah, yeah, and her mom. <laughs> and her mom, and Blind Danner, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> they, they raised the house lights so that you could take a foot, they could film the audience. So all of a sudden we were full frontal. Yeah. The whole audience was like, hey, and oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Like, this is so much fun. Too much, too much. So um, much. Jason, you're going to come back and do a show for me, right? One of these? Yeah, absolutely. And I want to hear such a beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Proud of. Um, all right, yeah. Jason, I'm bidding you adieu. Thank you for your amazing guest appearance. Keep in touch. Right, Stay safe, girl. Peace out. Patty Wilson. Um, yes. Okay, so do we have to do donations or we're going to go to some? I think um, let's, well, hold on. You know what? I think you should you should show that other okay, video. So, or we can go to Dr. LaPook for the question. What do you want? Well, do, so, do you have a question for Dr. LaPook? Yeah, there is. We actually have one. Okay, well, Dr. Can bring Dr. LaPook in. All right, J Patrick, hold tight. Peace, hold out. Yeah, peace <clears throat> out. LaPook. So Dr. LaPook, there was another question. This came from uh, Howard Marmerstein, and this is regarding testing. Oh, boy. If tests become available for everybody, mm. should we be tested constantly? We may not have the virus this week, but we can end up getting it next week. Right. Should one be tested over and over during the situation since one can have the virus but have no symptoms and just be a carrier? Well, no. So first of all, um, there's not nearly enough tests right now, even for people who have symptoms. Uh, and the way it's happening, at least in New York City, uh, the way it's triaging is, if you have mild symptoms, you have a cough, maybe you have even have a low-grade fever, uh, but you're pretty much feeling okay, you'll check with your health care provider. If you don't have a health care provider, you check with the there's, – there are hotlines. The New York State Department of Health has one, or you call an emergency room. But you get some advice, some input. They're mostly going to keep you at home. Hydrate right. you. Make sure you don't get dehydrated uh, because there's really no – added value to coming in and getting tested. And the testing, right now, I, I tried to send somebody today and it was gonna be, a, gonna be days before they could even be tested and then it could be, it could be a, couple, a, long, a day or two before they get the results. So right now, as we're trying to ramp up, um, the answer is no, you don't constantly test everybody. Eventually, there will be a different type of test. So a little technical, but I think it's important. Okay. The test that we're talking about now the swab up the nose or the back of the throat, if you're looking for live virus, you're looking for virus by a test called PCR. And um, that tells you whether it's active now. What, that's important in terms of do you, do you have active disease? But what we also want to know is an antibody test where you look for antibodies, IgM and IgG, antibodies showing that you were infected. And in fact, you may be immune right now. Right. We need that too because... For all we know, this has been circulating for a while, and a lot of people had it without realizing it. After all, uh, the symptoms can be anything from none, asymptomatic, no symptoms in your shedding, as the question implies, to very sick. So we have to get our arms around, you know, how common it is. And and this is a big question right now because I'm an internist, and I'm, I got a lot of questions again today. If somebody normally this time of year, it's cold and flu season. I have the sniffles. I have a little sore throat. Um, 
or you may have a low grade fever, you may have the flu, you may have the common cold. So how do you distinguish that all? And so what we're doing now is we're kind of switching to telemedicine. I actually took a course today for NYU Langone and now I'm, I passed so I can, I can do telemedicine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think that's where we were trying to do. It doesn't mean we won't see you in person. We, we do that also. But the most the most people we can see from a distance, triage from a distance, the better. But this is an evolving thing. Right. Who gets tested when for how long? Uh, you know, we're trying we're figuring this out. And the last thing I'll say about this is, you know, we get teased, maybe even worse than teased uh, doctors over the years because we you know, we say one thing one day and then it's another thing the other day. Yes, take vitamin C. Don't take vitamin C. Take vitamin E, don't take vitamin E. Now you're seeing an evolving situation where the data may change day to day. And so you, you saw this discussion about medications, for example, hydroxychloroquine, which is Plaquenil, which is a malaria. Right. It's also used for rheumatoid arthritis or other, other medicines that are showing some promise, but that's from France, from China, small studies. They're not really controlled in the right way and everybody's getting all excited and it would be great if they work. But people who are scientists are saying, wait a second, um, we have to get the data and that may be changing. So you're hearing in these reports real time. We've never had a time like this where people are publishing like a day after they find the findings. Normally it goes through a review process. So we're getting into it's like as a physician and I'm sure for people out there, it's like drinking from a fire hydrant. I mean, in comes all this information. So we're trying to filter it for you. And at the same time, people like Tony Fauci are saying, Yes, we're hopeful. Yes, we're doing the trials, but take a deep breath. What we told you yesterday and the week before, it might change. Don't get upset. We're going to we're going to tell you everything we're thinking. Mm. We'll put it in a simple terms, of, but we're always going to tell you the truth. I know that it might change next week. I know that's disquieting, but I think it's better for people to know we're going to level with you and we're not going to be more confident than we really are. Uh, Dr. LaPook, Andrea Martin is still on and she has a question. Andrea. Hi. Andrea, what's your question for Dr. LaPook? Hi, Dr. LaPook. I'm here in, in Toronto, uh, Canada, uh, where the SARS epidemic was many, many years ago um, when I was here also. Um, so, you know, I flew from um, L.A. to Toronto on Saturday and I'm self-isolating. And I just want to know that if I and I do have little mild, like I have a sore throat and no, no cough, no fever. But, you know, don't feel I'm, I'm a little under the weather. If indeed I have symptoms and at the end of 14 days, I don't anymore, am I immune then from getting this if I go out and interact with anybody after 14 days? I'm so confused about that. No, that's a great question. And I'm glad, you know, you got all gussied up and then they whisked you off. So I'm glad they whisked you back <laughs> Um So that's the million dollar question. Because the big question you're really asking is, did I have COVID-19? Did I have this new type of coronavirus? So since you're not going to get tested, we won't know that, but if you do, if you did have it, um, then from everything we know, again, it's all new, but from what we know from past viral infections, once you get an infection, you build up the antibodies and you should have some immunity for a while. I mean, a year or several years, we don't know how long that would be. Uh, you know, with the flu, people um, can have a partial immunity to past flu, epi you know, different types of strains. So, but yet we need a flu shot every year because it can keep changing. So this is an evolving situation. It's a great, it's really a great question, but the answer is we don't know if you're immune because we don't know if you had uh, COVID-19. So that's all the more reason why I wish there were more tests. That's a, that's a really important moment that if I were tested now and I did have it, but mild symptoms, yeah. I could go out with confidence. I could help people. I could interact yeah. with people, but because I, I don't know, it's, um, it, it, it um, it it's an ingredient that's missing. I wish that we had more tests. There's no doubt. And remember, there's two things being worked on. Um, a home test. The Gates Foundation is working on a home test. Okay. People are not doing even if it's not that you do it at home. A nasal swab at home, and then somebody picks it up for you. You you send it somewhere. Um, and then again, this antibody test. I cannot overemphasize how important it's going to be, Andrea, because for people like you, perfect. You get a blood test really easy. You get a blood test and did it show past infection? Like when you go and you get a blood test and see when you're about to, you know, if you're going to be pregnant and you, of course, you get tested for, to see if you have MM, you know, measles, mumps, rubella, varicella, chickenpox, and then you want to check for immunity to that. Well, wouldn't it be great if you could check for immunity 
to COVID-19, to this, this new type of coronavirus. So that's something we definitely need to do. Is that, is it on, is it? Yeah. Is it fact, I, I got an email right before this went on that there's somebody I need to talk about who says they're developing that test. So I expect that's, not, I mean, we should be able to do that. It's not, you know, that hard to do technically. It's just ramping up. Okay. It's called an antibody test. I got to remember that. Thing. Antibody. There are two types. There are different types of antibodies, and IgM is if you've been recently infected. IgG is if you were infected, say, a little longer than just in the last uh, several weeks. And so IgM goes up, and then as it goes up, IgG goes. As it goes down, the IgG goes up. Anyway, we know how to look at it and say, ah, she has current infection or she had past infection. Okay. Excellent. Not, great. Straightforward, but at least gives us a clue. Great Andrea. question, Andrea. Love your questions. Love Great your makeup. Question. Okay. Bye, hon. Bye. Okay, Dr. Pook, love having you. We're going to see you tomorrow. Am I correct? Yes. So I just want to just make sure everybody knows. Dr. Pook comes back every show, basically whenever he can, unless he's called to like a greater calling. Tomorrow <laughs> afternoon, Audrey McDonald, Will Swenson, tomorrow night, Christian Chenoweth. But you're going to be back to say goodbye at the end with the doggies. But also remind people, because you're in it, that this Sunday on CBS Sunday morning, and it's going to lead the show. So 9 a.m., um, Rand Morrison, who's the executive producer, has been giving me the privilege of going straight to camera at the beginning of the last several Sunday mornings, which is very unusual, and just giving a spiel about coronavirus, about COVID-19. Uh, and this week, we're going to be talking, we're going to be featuring stars in the house. We're going to be talking about the importance of flattening the curve. And I'm going to mention you guys by name, the Actors Fund, and uh, talk to people about... Um, about uh, how you can find how you can find uh, a link to the pieces, and this is a good time for you guys to remind people that the Actors Fund is not just for actors. And then I will it's for actors. Me people, everybody in the business. Well, we're gonna bring you back. But box office, hair, script, anyone that works in show business can get help. Coast to coast, coast to coast, coast to coast. All right, we're gonna bring you back. Say goodbye with the doggies, <laughs> Patrick Wilson. I'm gonna bring you on right now, Patrick Wilson. We demand some music from you. Yes. All right. Well, in in the uh, spirit of seeing Jason Danielly, I'm going to bring out my son who's who's going to accompany me in, um, in man. <laughs> Wait, I'm so excited. Make sure you're near the microphone because I got to hear it all. What's your son's name? Cass? Cass, K-A-S-S. -S. First of all, use that. Cass finally knows how to use a microphone. Patrick, take his advice. <laughs> I've never heard yeah. any clearer. Okay. <laughs> really? I was screaming my head off. You couldn't hear me before? Girl, into the mic. <laughs> You're not right. Norman, okay? You don't hit the back wall. We need an actual. Oh, come on. I can totally hit the back wall. What else? Oh. I gotta go. Okay, here. Here we go. You ready? Uh oh. Cassie. What? Okay, hang on. Technical difficulties. What happened? No. Hang on. Andrea, I hope you're watching. Most amazing question ever. Can we get Andrea and Patrick to play Audrey and Seymour on Little Chop of Hearts? <laughs> so we're going to work on that, Andrea. We're going to work on it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, here we go. All right. Here we go. You're out of work. Your pride is missing. They call you jerk, but you don't listen. You haven't got a pot to piss in, but you're a man. Your hands are rough. Your back is hairy. Your talk is tough. Your smell is scary. Here's what you're not. You're not a fairy. No, you're a beer drinking real life man. But and when the beef comes out, you do the carbon. You hate Tom Cruise, but you love Lee Marvin. You're a man, you know this. And that's a bonus. Cause when you're swig and you're cojones, you'll show them what testosterone is. Cause you're a boat with beer drinking, shady driving man. Don't do it to be the most talked about man in Buffalo. Don't do it to be, uh, uh, to, to, for your friend, your best friend, Jerry, uh, who's doing this for his son. No, no, David Boy, do it for yourself. Show yourself the stuff you're made of. Do you feel me? You've got these plans, they always fail. What? You think 
Thought you were good. The actual original. Okay, Patrick. Cass was so good. Where's Cass? John, that was your role. Look who thought you were good. The actual original. Yes. Cass was so good. Where's Cass? That's really. Terribly. John Jellison thought you were amazing. Yeah. Oh my God. Shut up. John Jones. Shut the hell up. Yeah, that's true. Okay, we're gonna have to okay. Let's bring back. <laughs> Fix your damn internet, John. Celia <laughs> Keenan Bolger, stop lurking in the background, not helping. Jason, what is with him? Turn off your safari. He's watching it on. He's watching it on Actors Fun Org, and he's in on oh. your. Oh. Turn it off. Okay, I'm gonna come bring it back. Oh, he left rudely. <laughs> he left because you called. He's him not a up. man. He's a man. Nice man. <laughs> Patrick, there was a C in that song. He wants to be. Oh my gosh. Where's the? You know, I'm obsessed with your fluid riffs. Um, he wants to be so fluid. Well, I don't know. I'm just. just <laughs> Thank you, is the answer. Thank you. Take a look at the girl. That's everything I like. <laughs> yes, Jason, work. Wait, why is your long hair going down? Okay, we're going to read some <laughs> donation. Hey, John's back. John's back. Let's see if he fixed it. Johnny, any better? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Not since my mother was on. John. What's happening? Okay, he's gonna start getting ready for bed. <laughs> I'm out. We are right. We tried. Okay, James Wesley. We have, we have some more donations that just came in. Oh Here, my James, gosh! Read them. Okay. Oh, um, so, so many, so many big ones. As that's when, what she that's said. What <laughs> one woman just said, Maggie. Maggie, after this show, you can't give me a text like that that starts with so many big ones. <laughs> Paul from Colorado, $50. Gabrielle from California, $25. Uh, John from Pennsylvania, $50. Thomas from The Texas, reason I had it on is I can't see or hear anything. Wait, you finally sound my great. connection. Okay, you're off the screen, but you sounded great for five seconds. Bye. Here you go. Dwight from Pennsylvania, $75. Beth from Florida, $100. Carol from Pennsylvania, $50 to the Actors Fund. 
Roberta from New Jersey, $75. And William from California, $50. Yay! Okay, okay I want to, so here's the deal, yo. Just on a side note, Patrick, you'll appreciate this. So my friend Jack, Jack Plotnick, who directed you in Space Station 76, Carnegie Mellon, he made a donation and he was so excited to watch. And he didn't know that we don't get last names. Yeah, we don't, you know, it's for confidentiality. I get like, for, Actors Fund sends me the first name, the state, and the amount, right? And this is like a sampling of what they, they're not going to give me their last name. So Jack was watching so excited that we were going to shout him out. We had no idea. So he sent us this video. Here we go. What? Jack, $100 from California. Bonnie from Virginia, $100. And Abraham. I have a last name. And the last name is Plotnik. Jack Plotnik from California, you miserable son of a bitch. <laughs> so then, so we explained it to him. We're like, oh, Jack, don't worry about it. We really have no idea. But we sort of did know that our friend Gretchen was going to make a donation. So then Jack happened to be watching and filming. And then we got this the next day. 103. Gretchen, 515 from New York. I think I know who you are, Gretchen. Thank you. Our good friend Gretchen. Julia, 25 from Wisconsin. Linda, 51 from Massachusetts. Judy, $25 from New Jersey. <laughs> So just note, note to self. Um, okay, end of story. I'm gonna live just for fun. Let's just see what's happening here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Hi, John. Do you see us, John? Can you hear us? Can't hear a thing. <laughs> Listen, call my mother for tech advice. She's 88. I think she's a little more skilled. Okay, I gotta go. I can't. Oh my god. I can't. Okay. Um, Jason, by the way, I just want to promote your 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 album, you and Marin, that album just came out, right? How could people get that amazing album? Yeah, uh, it's called Broadway and Beyond, and it was the last uh, live performance that Marin and I performed in New York City in uh, uh, June of 2017. And proceeds uh, will be divided equally between Cancer Support Community, a wonderful organization that helps people uh, around the world with cancer, uh, and then... Uh, Tina's Wish organization, which uh, focuses on ovarian cancer research, and also the Actors Fund. Uh, sorry, awesome. yeah, the Actors. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, bravo, Jason, Patrick Wilson. You always uh, have Broadway Records dot com. Broadway yeah, Records, you we love. We love. Yes. Patrick Bandine. Wilson, yeah. you always have another damn movie coming out without singing. What a TV show? What's happening? Anything I need to know about? Be mad. Uh, we're we're on we're we're on hold now. It's affecting. Uh, Affecting the left coast as well. We're we're supposed to do um, uh, additional footage. They call it additional reshoots on um, for Conjuring Three, which is out in the fall. So well, um, we love Conjuring. It, yes. So hopefully that holds. You Con know. Uh, wait, what's he saying? Couldn't see or hear, but on YouTube. Okay, that was from Conley. Um, <laughs> hopefully that holds. Now. Uh, there he is. <laughs> How's it going? You, get, you cast sounded amazing, man. Oh, I miss you. you. I'm bringing. Yeah, my well, I'm I'm not getting a good enough signal to be able to join in. Plus, you know, pipes a little rusty. Really, you actually couldn't be clearer and sound better. And I'm one of the many people lamenting not going to getting a haircut before it was insane to get closer to other people. No, well, our daughter just cut. James's hair. Hold on. Here, get in, Julie. Yeah. Can't hear anything. <laughs> it just always ends with can't hear anything. Okay, bye, John. <laughs> I can't. Um, so that's the show. Thank you so much, Patrick. It's it's my fun. pleasure. I'm I'm I am thrilled to hopefully, you know, one of the casualties too, um, selfishly was I was gonna do another workshop of this show that I can't quite mention yet, but a musical? A musical. Yes. Uh, that I've done about for about four years, we've done different uh, workshops of. And so we just had to cancel that spring workshop, but hopefully the date still holds in the fall and I will be uh, returning to musical theater for the first time in a long time. Please yeah. God. No, I'm trying, I'm trying. It's been a long time of trying since around 2000. Anyway, okay, uh, wow. Patrick, we love you. Um, guys, Hi. thank you for loving this show. Please donate at theactorsfund.org. Oh, the dogs are done. I've lost you. Oh, wait. Here I lost you. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, we're back. So, listen, Bagel had a limp, but he's totally better now. Wait, where are the we dogs? Don't know where he went. Well, 
Oh, we always we always release yeah, the dogs. dogs. Hold on, we got it. What they about Doctor Patrick? You look crazy. <laughs> Not from that angle. Yeah. Okay, Doctor. Oh, Doctor the Poop, your dog is out. And how about an upbeat message for the end? Thank What's you. the upbeat message? The upbeat message is I I know it's scary right now, and I know there's uncertainty, but this will have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Remember, eight yes. percent of the people have relatively mild cases. It's going to be bumpy. I'm saying this over and over again, but I have never in my life seen so many brilliant minds coming together to address one problem. We will solve this. And this uncertainty reminds me of when HIV came out. I was an intern in, in the spring of 1981 when we saw the first patient. And it was that same, oh my gosh, that feeling in the, in the pit of your stomach. What is this? Completely unknown. And then as we started to get information we started to get our arms around it. And we're going to get our arms around this too. We will get through it. We're going to do it together. And we all have to think of the community. It's the community right now. So don't go to the beach with 50 of your friends. Please don't. So Donate at activistfund.org. And let me say goodbye. And your final, uh, your final laugh of the night is this. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Jay Jason, put it on. Uh -oh. All right, bye, everybody. Uh -oh. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 Oh, God. <laughs> bye, guys. Thank